All right, welcome back. Now, according to an Oxford Economies report, which provides an in-depth look at the aviation industry's contribution to global economic development and social prosperity, uh, while considering what uh, that reality means for individual countries, regions and towns, families and species, among other things, uh, this report finds that air transport directly employs over 5.5 million people and it contributes about $425 billion to global GDP, which is more than several members of the G20. Now, according to the report, aviation's GDP contribution is around one and a half times the size of the pharmaceutical industry, uh, which has about $270 billion GDP, uh, $270 billion GDP, or the textile industry of $286 billion GDP. And then a third, uh, bigger than uh, the motor production industry, uh, which has about $322 billion GDP. Now, when combined with its supply chain and independent industries, including its contribution of, to tourism, aviation supports over 33 million jobs and uh, $1.5 trillion GDP. As a country, this would rank aviation in eighth position between Italy and Spain. So we have an estimated 35% uh, of all trade in manufactured good, uh, goods travel by air, and this is worth some uh, $3.5 uh, trillion. Now, the aviation, according to the report, uh, noted currently generates about $10 billion of African GDP, the entire African continent, with the industry forecast to support 5 million jobs in the region in the next 20 years. We could go on and on with all this... Um, uh, Oxford Economies report. But um, we have been joined by Olumide Ohuayo, an aviation expert in our Buja studio, to talk to us about how the aviation se fed, how the aviation sector fed in 2018. Uh, good morning, Olumide, and Happy New Year to you. Good morning. Happy New Year. All right, now except for the improved stability in airlines operations, uh, the new routes recorded, and wider operations by private operators, uh, as well as um, pockets of infrastructural facelifts, we saw some of them in the country last year in, in River State, amongst other states, uh, the industry recorded nothing of significance. Uh, that's what um, a lot of people would say, that in terms of real growth, uh, we lost um, about or more than $2 billion investment from international financiers. Now, could you tell us what is responsible for this? As if you agree with this. Well, um, uh, not in totality, uh, will I agree. Um, there, there was some little improvement in the, in the industry last year. Um, one, one, one you can look at is the quick reportage of the, uh, and release of the aviation uh, accident reports by the investigation bureau. Uh, those reports help in, uh, in safety and uh, improves uh, uh, safety operations in the industry, which is key to profitability. Uh, I think that was, that was a plus for us. Uh, but I think the major issue that held the industry down uh, is the, the slowdown, the meltdown in the economy uh, that uh, we, and we, we used most of last year to, to recover from, uh, from that. Uh, again, the exchange rate was, uh, you, uh, you know, has, has been high compared to what was what we had about two, three, three, three years ago. So that exchange rate uh, slow down participation in industry. Then coming to the policies itself, I think most of the policies of the government uh, have been too long in the incubator, and uh, by now you don't even know. We are not even sure whether that egg will come out uh, to with 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 with, 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 the, with the child. Or we just probably die a natural death because uh, if you look at it, we have the, they have the concession, they have the uh, formation of a national carrier, the um, maintenance repair organization to come on board. And in the past four years now, this has been the plan, and it has not come. None of them have come on board. And um, if you look at Ghana here, one or two of those that I've mentioned after they started implementation, and that's that has slowed us down here, and that has also affected the industry. Like I, like, like I said, we spent too much time. In the incubator this year. I just hope next year we will move out of the incubator and start hatching our eggs. But most importantly, it is time for government to realize that it is the private sector that drives the aviation industry. And all you need to do is prepare the regulations, prepare the rules, uh, the rules protect your industry, protect your people, and uh, in that way you go to the industry. 
let's look at uh, the assessment of a safe sky. Uh, uh, it appears it's getting better, but correct me if I'm wrong. It, what is responsible for us having a safe sky? You, you, you recall that a good number of us, when we hear about flying, there's this phobia. As we speak, there are still some people who will not even take that route because of that fear when they hear about uh, uh, crash and anything that has to do with crash. We had some close to death situation where the door was open and some other infractions there. How will you describe, uh, uh, in terms of regulation and in terms of you know uh, compliance to the standard? Uh, yeah, if you if you if if, if, if there's anything I would commend um, in, in in our skies for now is the is the improvement on safety. We have done tremendously well in um, improving safety. What I think what we should be what we should be what should we be looking at now is the economic regulation. That is what has not made the airline. That's the area that has to do with, with the profitability and um, um, uh, operations of the of, of the carriers. Because right, right, on, on the safety part, we've done so well. You remember, we still have a Category 1 uh, with the year certification. It's still with us. We, we, we retained it after, uh, when they came for the interview. We have a CAO certification. And um, all these things are not just, they don't just come and take the box. They come and check your books, look whether you, 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 are, you have the procedure and processes in place. This we have been able to sustain. And if you look at it, yes, like, like you said, you have, you have mentioned incidents in the industry not accident and luckily we've not had one we saw what happened with the lion air six weeks old aircraft went down so we we, we, we are lucky and, and we, we're not relaxed we're, we're not staying on luck we are working on the safety aspect of the industry and that has been done by by the ncaa um ensuring that all regulations are in place and implemented by by by, by them and monitoring. So we, 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 we've been lucky. If you look at the two incidents you mentioned, the, the, the issue of the door coming out, and the, I think the last one was the one of the oxygen marks. The oxygen marks, the oxygen marks that dropped on the, one of the um, commercial flights. Oxygen marks is it, shown by it's either a human error from the, from, the, from the equipment itself or natural, if there's, a, if there's a turbulence. While we are with the investigations, uh, the most important thing was that the, mark, the marks dropped, which was one of the safety recommendations, the marks dropped. Passengers used it somewhere torn. And the, and the crew walked around after the incident to ensure that nobody... So we are lucky. At least everybody on that flight came out and went to their houses. When it happened on Ryanair early this year, 33 passengers were taken to the hospital. So that was the difference. So we, 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 are, we, are, we are doing well on the safety part, but we will not just relax. We have to continue and sustain it because safety is a continuous process. You don't have to stop. and how they are affected. Now, the, the, in the course of this last year, rather, 2018, if you were talking about um, 2018 and saying this year, well, in the course of last year, the federal government approved a waiver on value-added tax for domestic um, airlines. Could you tell us what's impeded the, um, uh, the implementation? For, for me, uh, I am not too excited about, about it, but the, 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 law, the, the industry wants that to come in and then we, we hope the implementation will come out. What, what, I, what I see here is the documentation process. I mean, before, the minister could have just uh, said, uh, I've, I've said, the government has approved it now, it, it, uh, I have signed it and it moved. But it's not anymore. You have to pass documents from the Ministry of Finance, uh, the audit, back to the airline for implementation. For me, um, I, I, think, I think the process of doing that has been so slow since, we, since the president came out openly to say he has approved the, uh, the removal of that. We are the only, it's the only air transport, the only transport mode that is, that is the only transport mode paying VAT as, uh, as it were now. And the law says the all transport, all transport modes should not pay VAT. Uh, if, you, if you look at, if you look at your a typical ticket, you find that the VAT is infinitesimal there. So even when it is removed, I did not see a ticket, a ticket fare dropping below maybe 500 or max 800 naira. Because what, what the airlines have done intelligently is to, is to load the first of charge and then uh, put VAT on only, only basic fare, or not on the total fare. So we will not see the difference much. And that's why you see that they are not crying most for the, for the VAT remover. Because they, they, because they know what they've been doing. But I, I'm, I'm happy the, the government has done it. Uh, implement, implementation is what we are waiting for. I'm, I'm sure you, by, the, by the time all the papers are passed, it will, it will come to pass. But to tell you the truth, I, I, the, the fair difference won't be much. You won't, we won't feel it. 
Olumide, let's, let's look at the state of our airports. Uh, I don't know, I'm sure you've had a series of experience when they talk about when we get to uh, our airport, there's always this sad feeling that, wow, we like this, what is happening? What about the AC? What about the toilets? And these things, you, you hear Nigerians complain from time to time. And maybe this is what you are ad advocating, which is, uh, giving it to the private sector, is that the way out or how do we really manage it? Because some will argue with you that, oh, at least the, the, the car park is already given on a PPP arrangement. And when you look at MM2, talking about Lagos too, you also have some kind of sanity in terms of how airports should look like. But beyond that, how do we have something we can say, this is Nigerian airport and it is good? Well, um, you, you you noticed something this year. They, they when when the Ghanaian Authority opened their new terminal and uh, it went viral. I think that I, I didn't know the the industry, the the government was watching the watching that uh, the, on the social media. So when 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 we opened our two terminals, the one in Portakot and Abuja, that just been commissioned, the the minister said, "Now we are we are now on the trail and we are ready to show the world that what Ghana has is small thing." Well, we have commissioned but those those two terminals. Those two terminals are open for operations, but we have commissioned. Then you wonder why were we in a hurry to commission who we were not ready to operate? Because we all we need those terminals to operate. But coming coming to your question directly, um, one of the things that I'm kept kept in incubator by this by this government is the concession of the airports. Four 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 airports have, four airports have been marked for this concessioning, and as I'm, as as, as it's where today. All we heard was the last time they called uh, Transona advisors to advise them on it. No, there has not moved forward. I, I thought they, they would have taken all their all their programs together. Rather than, they started with the national career, and the national career has, has, has gotten some hiccups now. And now um, I'm sure they will move into the airport concession. But I, but, but with what has happened with the national career, I expect you, they will get some resistance from the unions in the industry concerning the question of the airport. But by and large, the, the way forward for the for the airports. It's uh, is to see how we can involve some private hands in its in its management. I, for one, in my own opinion, I, I am not too cool with the concession of uh, selected terminals. I see that as cherry picking. I prefer. I would rather want to see that fund itself as a body is concessioned. So that somebody takes over fund and the 20 airport. You can. And what I'm looking at now is not just looking at people that will go and register tomorrow at the CAC and go and bid. Get reputable airport companies all over. They are there, about three or four of them. Pick them, let them go for interview, give them 10 years to turn over um, fund and this management. If Jam, if Jam can generate 9 billion for the government, fund should ger generate 10 times that amount if properly managed. What we have now is that we have the, the, the organizational structure of Almost all the agencies in, in, in the industry are more politicized, and that's why the operators have been I'm feeling. The Kim Minister keep promise, promising us that, that he was going to reorganize and reposition these agencies. And you cannot just reposition by just funding. You must start with the structure, with the manpower, with the manpower within. What we had was that the, in the last 16 years of the, of, the, of, of the other party, they loaded the place with political appointees, and, 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 and that has reduced the level of professionalism in the place. Now, those are, uh, the new government that came in, we are expecting you to address it. But what we see is that you just play the chess game, moving one player here and putting another player there. So I think that's some work. We are going to those agencies. But coming back to the airport itself, I am of the opinion, and I totally support that we move that body called Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria fund to a come to, to a Federal Airport Company of Nigeria. And in doing that, we need a reputable airport management company that will come and do a clean work of Clearing all those cobwebs, leakages, 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 financial leakages, rearranging the organizational structure and ensuring that all the airports are, are, are functional. Thereafter, we cannot start looking at how to consider some to some private in, to, 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 some to some groups and individuals. But right now, if you pick only those four, what is going to happen is that the remaining 16 airports will suffer because those 16 airports are not viable. And nobody's going to come and touch it. An airport that's not viable. So within, 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 this, within this, a kind of investment, through management, 
and this can be done by just getting one or two of table companies. International companies not made in, not companies that are going to chase right, it well, tomorrow there, morning. We have a lot of questions to ask concerning the concentration of uh, the airport establishment. Well, because of time, let's try to touch other areas uh, that um, also might be of interest to Nigerians who are watching at the moment. Now, one of the things that shook yeah. the aviation sector in 2018 uh, was um, the plan to float a national carrier by the federal government. Uh, with the Minister of State for Aviation, Hadi Sirika, saying that um, the much awaited national carrier, which was named Nigeria Air, uh, would kick off in December. That was last year. But unfortunately, in September, he announced that um, it will be suspended. Now, do you think that um, the process whereby it's even you know, conceived planning or you conceived the floating of this airline, do you think it was done half heartedly uh, for them to have called it off? just when Nigerians were beginning to be excited about this national career? I, th I think the, the conserving um, a national career for Nigeria at this moment was not a bad idea. The implementation and the process was the issue, and I, and I think that is why we found ourselves in the, in the lacuna we, have, uh, we are right now. Um, at the time, yes, the minister was consulting with Nigeria, with the people, with professionals in the industry. But I think the consultation was like, this is where I'm going. You, all you have to do is follow me. But when you have, when you're looking for it, when you, when you intend to start a national carrier, and you intend to get five aircraft, and within the industry, two airlines, I've gotten six uh, uh, long, 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 long trip jets, jets that do, that do international flight, and another airline, the Green Airways that we just ordered 10 points, 100 point 737 was coming on board with expert with experts from all over the world, professional experts. You would know that this 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 was going to challenge the new national career. Who was going to, who's, who's going to come and invest in a place whereby he sees that the competition coming in might might affect his investment? Again, here's an here's a country that is preparing for elections early next year. And nobody's sure what's going to happen. So nobody's going to come in and throw his money in November. And by May, if, if, if it happens, and a new government comes in. So I think the timing was really poor. And, um, and it was also a blessing that the government said, look, let's pause here. We don't, we, we don't want to sink money. We don't want to take a risk. And I think that was, that was very intelligent from the government. What, what I think should, should be done now is the government should just look at any of the carriers within and see how... They can participate and push that and any of them to, to take that position of the national carrier. Again, how do you how do you handle this? You have two airlines, Arik and Aero, who are other Amcon, and Amcon is owned by government. That means you have two airlines with the government. And those two airlines are at the mercy of government today because Nigerians invested money in the banks they collected money from. So how do you how do you now manage that? That you're going to start another, another career and allow these two airlines to die? These two airlines had investors who were interested, who came and wanted to see how they can invest in the two cars. But immediately we started the national career project, they walked away. So there's a delicate balance now. Yes, we need a strong career because since the general always the members of the general always, all the private airlines have, have been asked to take over of one way or the other falling by the wayside. So we need a strong carrier because you cannot just build airports and terminals and say you want investors to come in. There must, be a, there, there must be a strong airline to move passengers, to encourage passengers to use those airports. Okay. So as we work towards this the, 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 the project of the national carrier, we should look at what we can do from within those available, how they can key into it. You might just set your criteria. Okay, Olumide. But, yeah, but you must uh, look at the, those on ground rather than trying to start up. Thank you, Olumide. Uh, it's a pleasure talking with you. Uh, it's, as, I always look forward to talking with you, but I don't know why you decided to be in Abuja, but wherever you are, we will track you and we'll make sure that you continue. No, no, to be this, this, this was different. I, was, I, I had to be in Abuja for the, for the new year. Okay. Well, uh, once you again, will see me. I'll be in Lagos before year. Friday. Happy New Year to you. Thanks for your intervention on this. Happy show. New Year to you, bro. I know it's quite short. For you to cover what happened in aviation for the old 12 months but you've done well you've done justice to that we quite appreciate you and um, thank you zika it's time for us to talk sport you know so many things are happening yeah. this period yeah you know, was, Very, yeah i can't wait for matches. yeah yeah man city is number three now gradually going down <laughs> going down going down going down but well jd alabi will be joining us on set very shortly to talk to us about some sports updates we'll be right back uh, shortly please join us again